Tanner, Tanner, Tech, Tanner, Tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today, I'm going to show you how to hear light. Now, by this, I mean we are going to build a circuit that allows you to hear the different changes in light as changes in frequency. Now, this is a kind of cool new way to see or hear the world because you're not actually seeing it but hearing it. This is cool just to have because you can be able to hear different changes in light and kind of see the world in a whole new way. This may also be helpful for anybody who is blind and would like to see or hear the world around them. So in this video we're going to build a simple circuit with a 555 timer and light dependent resistor that will allow us to see or hear the changes in light. I will then show you some video of different things such as a firecracker going off and other um, events that use light and I will show you first the video of what it looks like and then I will overlay the sound from my circuit onto the video. So you can not only see what the video is, but you can hear what you're seeing. And it makes kind of a pretty cool effect. So let's get started. So in order to build this circuit, we're going to be using something called a 555 timer. Now how this 555 timer works is when current flows from positive through pin seven, which is called the discharge pin, it charges this capacitor. Now what happens is as this capacitor is charging through these resistors, um, the voltage will rise right here, proportional to how big the capacitor is and how big the resistors are. Now pin two is the threshold pin, which means it measures the voltage right here. Now when it reaches a certain voltage, the trigger pin activates and it causes the 555 timer to turn on. Now this causes pin 7 to activate the um, trigger and it drains the capacitor back to ground. Now what this does is it creates uh, something called a multivibrator which allows this 555 timer to create a square wave output on pin 3 such as this. So it turns on and then turns off and then on and off at a very quick frequency. This frequency can be determined by this capacitor and these two resistors. If this capacitor is a very high capacitance, the frequency will be lower. If this resistor is a very high resistance, the frequency will be lower. And these can be changed based on the values of these components. In my circuit specifically, this potentiometer will set the range of frequencies this circuit will put out because you don't want it too high pitched or too low pitched. And this light dependent resistor will change resistance based on the amount of light applied to it, which can be explained in my previous video. And this light dependent resistor will change the frequency that we can hear based on the light levels. Now that you have a basic understanding of how this circuit works, it's time to build it. Well, for this project, you're going to need the materials presented in the schematic. That is a 555 timer, capacitor, uh, two capacitors, one resistor, two potentiometers, a light dependent resistor, uh, photo jack, and some other components. Now first we're going to be experimenting with the circuit on something called a breadboard, which allows us to make different changes to the circuit while we're building it. So we're going to start building the circuit by inserting the components into the breadboard and then connecting them with hookup wires based on the connections in the schematic. Now this process is fairly simple, it just takes a little bit of time to get done. So I'll make a quick time lapse of doing this. Alright, now that you have your small little circuit built, you can connect it up to your power supply. As you can see, there is a sound. And, as you can see, your oscillator is working. When I put my finger in front of the LDR, you can hear a change in pitch. So we can set this pitch so it's not so annoying, and put it down a little more by turning this screw. And we could turn up the volume 
using this potentiometer. As you can see, based on the shadow I put on the LDR, I can change the frequency. Alright, so now that you know that this breadboard version of your circuit works, it's time to actually implement this circuit inside a piece of perf board. Now with this, you insert all the circuit, all the pieces of component, inside here. And then what you do is you solder them together on the bottom uh, with traces according to how they are wired in the circuit diagram. This is slightly more difficult, but it makes for a more permanent solution to your circuit. Now when you do this, you can be creative and use the best circuit traces you can to solve this problem the most efficient way. So I'll start by removing all the hookup wires, leaving just the components. Then I'll take out the components and start soldering them onto this board. Now as you can see on my board right here, I placed this resistor between pins 7 and 8 because in the schematic, that resistor goes between pin 7 and 8. Now I can cross pins and connect pins on the 555 timer underneath the actual board. This capacitor is placed between pin 6 and this line of dots, which will be known as ground. Same with this capacitor. It is placed between pins 5 and the line that we will know as ground, such as right here in the schematic. After everything is connected, you can solder them all in place. Then, after everything is soldered in place, you can connect all the leads together and cut them with these wire cutters. Now, after all your solder connections are all finished and soldered up, you can now connect the hookup wires to positive, negative, and the speakers. Now, I've made a slight change to the schematic regarding the volume control. What I've done here is I've put the speaker and the resistor potentiometer into a voltage divider type setup. Well, instead of these two components right here, I have these two components, which are the exact same but wired in a different way that makes the volume control work better. Finish adding all the hookup wires and soldering in this final potentiometer. I will then attach some of the hookup wires into this small headphone jack to connect it to speakers and other things. So now after everything is soldered and all the hookup wires are in place, you can take your hookup wires and solder them to this 8th inch headphone jack and then cut, take the cover and screw it back on so you have your entire setup all done. Now to hear the results of this um, circuit that can convert differences in light to differences in sound, well take it and we'll connect it to power over here and then we will connect the headphone jack coming out of the circuit into a headphone jack going into some speakers and as you can see you can hear some sound and then as I put my hand near the LDR it changes pitch based on the resistance I can also change the frequency range of this circuit by adjusting the frequency potentiometer to take this circuit on the go, we can connect it to a small uh, 2 AA battery pack because 3 volts is plenty to power this circuit. Now after everything's all connected, you can put in some batteries and you're ready to take this thing on the go. Now, if you just want to take this and play around with it by listening to different levels of light, you can put in some headphones and then you can connect your headphone jack up into the circuit and you can hear it that way but in the case of this video I'd like you guys to hear it too so what I'll do is I'll unplug this and then I'll plug in splitter which splits the signal from the audio jack into two separate channels and then I'll take it and I'll insert the headphones into one side and the input from my microphone to the other side. That way I can plug this USB into my computer and record the sounds coming from this circuit as well as listening to them in my headphones. Full setup looks something like this. Now that your setup is all ready, and as you can see I have my computer with Audacity running and all of my wiring going to this circuit, 
we can now start. So what I will be doing is I will be lighting off a few fireworks right in front of the um, LDR or light dependent resistor. And so we should not only hear the explosion of the fireworks, but we can also hear the light changes inside the fireworks, which should be very cool to hear. So here's just a flashlight shining on. Now we will see what one of these magnesium flares looks like when you light them. These are a type of firework that glows really bright and will make a really cool effect on this sensor. we've all been waiting for, we're going to see the explosion of a firecracker. We're also going to hear the explosion by hearing its light. So here we go. So in this video, I showed you how to hear the light of an explosion. And that's pretty cool to see. So, as always, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for my next video, where I'll be showing you how to utilize this same type of circuit to build something even cooler. An optical theremin.